So your skin barrier is damaged. I don't judge because same. Not only do I have an open flesh wound, but I've also got a severe latex allergy. Yay! Let's discuss what to do if you have a severely damaged skin barrier and when you should treat it at home versus when you need to see a doctor. What causes a skin barrier to get damaged in the first place? And then what are the three most basic things that someone can do to try to get it to calm down? In order to understand that, we need to talk about some skin anatomy. Your skin is like a cake, baby. It's like a seven layer burrito because it's got layers. And the top one is the only one that we see. But as we know, we have hairs, we have sweat glands, we have other structures that go deep into the skin. And yes, we have multiple layers throughout. The bottom set is known as the dermis and the top set is known as the epidermis. And the epidermis is much, much thinner as you can see. This is also where a lot of damage that we see happens. If there is something that is epidermal, it's usually something that you might be able to at least help with at home. But if you have something deep, especially if it goes into the dermis or those bottom layers of the epidermis, such as the stratum basale or the stratum basal layer where new skin cells are created, you definitely wanna get that taken care of by a medical doctor, by a professional, by someone who can help. For example, one form of skin damage is, hi, an open flesh wound. Just a flesh wound. A fissure, a cut, a burn. Obviously, if those need stitches, if those penetrate deep, or if they blister, you wanna get that seen by a professional. You wanna make sure it's kept sterile and clean and it has a chance to heal. And um, only a doctor can help you do that. Other forms of skin damage other than like flesh wounds can be irritation. For instance, this latex allergy <laughs> that I have. You could have contact dermatitis. You could have itchy, dry skin. You could have even little pimples or a rash. And this is still important to get seen by a doctor to get a diagnosis so you know what it is uh, and to make sure it's not cellulitis, which is like a bacterial spreading skin infection. But let's say that this isn't your first rodeo. You've had a little irritation or damage before, or you know that your severely damaged skin barrier is not due to some mysterious unknown, but it's due to over exfoliating. Did you go a little too hard with the chemical peel? Because I have. Did you get a sunburn? Did you have exposure to an allergen that you know your skin is sensitive to or use a product that didn't work? Or were you on a dry plane? Did you change environments? Did you do something that triggered your skin that has compromised your barrier and you are looking to repair it? Well, if so, then you're in the right place. Otherwise, the right place to be is in the emergency room. Yay! <laughs> the first and most important thing for you to do at home is to, step one, identify the damage. We just did that. Make sure that you know what it is and make sure that you stop it. If it is a sunburn, get out of the mother sun. <laughs> if it is a product or something that has caused irritation, make sure that you stop using that product or you look at that ingredients list, identify the thing and avoid other products with it. If you have an open burn or flesh wound, um, don't pin a curling iron to your chest. That's like, that's like step number one, right? Yeah, yeah, one would think, one would think. I have reflexes and dexterity. I caught the curling iron. I just caught it aggressively <laughs> right here. Baseline out of the way, step number one is calm the irritation. So again, removing that irritant. If it is something like a pimple or a series of acne pimples, you could use something like a pimple patch. In the case of my flesh wound, hi, I have an antibacterial bandage. Get out of the sun and also use a mineral-based sunscreen. You want to calm down that skin. Usually the best way to do this is just a cold compress and some very gentle water. As long as the skin is not broken, as long as there is you know, no pus or no bleeding, you can use a cool compress to calm down the area and to remove any product that could be causing irritation or even to soothe the sunburn that, you know, was less than favorable. I have had some of those. Let me just say, I'm a human. I have made mistakes. I went close to the equator forgetting that I needed to reapply my sunscreen more diligently than I was used to. This is from a few years ago, but learn from my mistakes. Okay, bitch. Okay. <laughs> Speaking of burns and barriers, step number two, repair the motherfucking barrier. You want to use ingredients that your skin naturally produces. You want to use things to strengthen your skin and to help give your skin support while your biology is trying to rebuild. Now, what is our skin naturally made up of? Obviously keratin, proteins, but our skin also has hyaluronic acid. Our skin also has ceramides. 50% of the outermost layer of our epidermis, the stratum corneum, is made of ceramides. You can 
also find things like cholesterol and other lipids. And if you give your skin some of that nourishment back without the fragrances, without the irritation, that can go a long way. Depending on what is going on with your skin and what your doctor recommends, if you did get a diagnosis or if you have you know, a fissure or a cut or a burn that is open, you may want to use an antibacterial agent to prevent infection. But we are keeping that with the medical professionals and at home looking for things like ceramides, like cholesterols, like waxy fatty lipids, like jojoba, which I love, is a great idea. The most basic skincare routine that is affordable and effective is literally just a good cleanser and a good sunscreen. That is all you need. Now for a damaged skin barrier, I would also recommend something like a nice moisturizer. That can go a long way, but getting a fragrance-free gentle cleanser that is non-stripping, getting a moisturizer that aids in that skin barrier repair, and getting a mineral sunscreen that doesn't burn or sting, it is literally the best you can do. You also want these ingredients to have a pH that is similar to your skin. Remember that on the pH scale, the potential hydrogen or power of hydrogen scale, water is a seven, but our skin likes to hang out at around a 5.5. And while that is slightly acidic, it actually helps our skin protect against microbes, bacteria, fungi, etc. And so using products that are balanced at that same pH is really helpful. I really love Ceramedics. That is a great one. You can find other shea butter or glycerin-based products that are wonderful. Good old Salimo jelly, aka vegan Vaseline or petrolatum jelly is excellent. And as an occlusive barrier, it can actually prevent your skin from losing more moisture, which often happens with a damaged skin barrier. So stopping the irritation and then preventing that from worsening is excellente. As far as mineral sunscreens go, there are many I recommend. Australian gold is great. If you have a little bit more money to spend, Biosans is good. Even The Ordinary has one that is great if you are on a budget. There are many out there. Just try to make sure that it is fragrance and dye free. And remember that while your skin barrier is damaged, the less ingredients, the better. As far as cleansers go, Skin Fix has some great ones. They are very barrier friendly. CeraVe is often used because it's uh, very basic, but there are some other ones that I would personally recommend instead because these are cruelty free and I find them to be a little bit more gentle. But something you do want to remember is to avoid actives at this time. Yes, the girl who loves the actives is telling you to avoid actives. Don't go in with salicylic acid for acne. You know, don't go in with the benzyl peroxide because now is not the time. We've actually spoken about how anti-aging products like retinoids and anti-acne products like acids can technically damage the skin barrier just to get in. But often this can lead to over exfoliation and maybe the reason that this damage and that this barrier degradation is happening in the first place if you overdid it with those products. So remember to avoid the actives. Once your barrier starts to heal and like especially if you are recovering from a wound or something, you might want to look at a very low level gentle vitamin C and you also might want to look at a very hydrating hyaluronic acid. The reason why is because both hyaluronic acid and vitamin C have been shown to aid in wound healing and in scar prevention and in collagen and elastin formation in specific medical studies. And those can be very helpful, but again, don't apply them to open wounds, burns, or cuts. Make sure that you're in the healing process. Uh, Jumiso has a very great gentle vitamin C. True Skin also has a great vitamin C if you are acne prone. That one's a little bit more intense though. The Ordinary and the Inky List also have some vitamin C. The Inky List actually has the vitamin C and epidermal growth factor, the EGF serum. That would be fantastic once your barrier is on its way to repair. But during the hot moments of barrier battlegrounds, you want to make sure that you are avoiding the actives. And of course, protect. You know that I'm gonna blab about sunscreen, but don't forget things like vegan Vaseline, having an occlusive barrier, having a bandage, protecting this from the sun, using a UPF jacket. For me, this is literally right on my chest, and in this dress, like you can see everything, but using a shirt or even a swimsuit that comes up to my neck like a halter top is a way that I can still look cute, but keep this area even more protected because the sun not only causes skin cancer, but it also worsens scars. It slows down healing. It can cause more issues in the long run. So physical protection, sunscreen protection, preferably mineral sunscreen protection, it is the way to go. And you and your barrier can thank me once you are all healed and happy. We have more videos on other barrier repair here. For instance, if you have been on Accutane, what you might want to do once you're done with your doctor's recommendations and you get home, as well as some barrier repair skincare routines that we have reacted to. Overall, always remember to stay hydrated, reapply that mineral SPF, get rid of whatever is causing the barrier damage in the first place, and always remember to be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in one of these next videos. And in the meme at the end, because I mean, fucking memes, have you been collecting them? Have you been screenshotting and sending in the group chat? <laughs> love you guys, bye.